Hey, Katie. Hey, Alex. Great to meet up with you here on Mozart Snapshots. Thanks. It's great to meet up with you, too, as always. This is a beautiful place to enjoy a spaziergang on a day like today. It is indeed, and Mozart's wife, Constanza, would have agreed with you because she and her second husband, Georg Niesen, lived right up here on Nonbergasse number 12 when they moved to Salzburg in the early 1820s. I thought they lived in an apartment in the Alte Mark, right over Café Tomaselli. Well, they did indeed. However, they also acquired an apartment up here to come for the summer months so that they could escape the heat of the city. Constanze and Nissen lived in Copenhagen, where Nissen was from, and also in Italy. So what brought them back to Salzburg? They were working on a biography of Mozart, and they wanted to be close to his sister Nanel, or Maria Anna, who still lived here, because she had all of the family letters and the information about Wolfgang's childhood that Constanze simply did not. Well, this was a very pleasant place for them to work on the biography. Yes, and what was also nice is that Constanze had a little garden up here, and she always loved gardening. And so when her second husband, Georg, died, she continued to live up here and was joined by her younger sister, Sophie. Constanze had a couple sisters. There were four Weber girls, Josefa, Aloysia, Constanze, and Sophie. Aloysia was quite a famous singer. She was actually one of the most famous singers of her day because she was renowned for her incredible vocal range which could easily reach a high G as well as the expressive qualities of her singing. Didn't Wolfgang fall in love with her first? He did, yes, because when he met the Webers for the very first time, he was on a job hunting tour in Mannheim in 1777. And he was absolutely taken by the talent of Aloysia, and so he taught her for a while, because not only was she a good singer, but she was a very accomplished pianist, and he composed music for her. But unfortunately, the love was not reciprocated. Poor Wolfgang. He composed music for her later on, too. Yes, and she became famous for all of her career as a Mozart interpreter. Was the whole family musical? The girl's father, Friedelin Weber, was a double bass player and a music copyist, and his half-brother was the father of the composer and pianist Karl Maria von Weber. And then not only was Aloysia talented, but her older sister Josefa was the original queen of the night and she sang the role for 10 years. And Constanza, although she didn't ever have a big career, she was always talented as well. And remember, Mozart composed his great C minor mass for her. One of his greatest works. Yes, and when you think about what makes Mozart's vocal writing so exceptional, is that he never wrote beyond the capability of the singer for whom he was writing. And so when you look at the soprano part, it is clear that Constanza had an excellent voice with many of the same characteristics as her older sisters, although a lower vocal range. So where was Constanza born? In the little town of Zell in Wiesenthal in present-day Baden-Württemberg, Germany. But she and her sisters spent most of their childhood in Mannheim, where their mother was from. How did Wolfgang and Constanze come together? In 1781, Wolfgang made his break with Salzburg and the Archbishop and moved to Vienna. He had to find somewhere to live, so he looked up his old friends, the Webers, because they had also just moved to Vienna about a year and a half earlier because Aloysia had gotten a very prestigious engagement from the Burg Theater. Their father Friedelin had died, and so it was just the four girls and their mother. And initially, Wolfgang thought that he'd spend a week or so there, but that week turned into months. So he fell in love. He did indeed, and he wrote his father that Constance's beauty consisted of two little black eyes and a pretty figure. Leopold was not too happy when Wolfgang informed him of his new infatuation. That's right, because he wanted Wolfgang to marry into the upper class to give him financial security, as well as a good place in society. But Wolfgang, much like his father, who married a penniless woman, Mozart's mother, Wolfgang also married for love. And he said, I love her, she loves me. What more could I possibly wish for in a wife? So they got married with or without that blessing. They did, in the Stephansdom, on the 4th of April, 1782. However, Wolfgang's blessing did come a day after. 
and as a wedding present, Wolfgang gave Constanze a beautiful gold watch which he had received on his very first trip to Paris, and she wore it for the rest of her life. It seems that they were very happy together. Well, you know, like every couple, they had their ups and downs, including the death of four children and financial woes. But for all intents and purposes, Constanza seems to have been a perfect match for Wolfgang because she was educated at the Catholic school in Mannheim. She was fluent in French and could speak other languages. Of course, she was musically knowledgeable and uh, she was also very practical, clever and down to earth. And this flirtatious personality that we always hear about was probably a great match for Wolfgang and his somewhat childlike, crude sense of humor. Wolfgang certainly wrote some steamy love letters to her from his travels. Oh, he definitely missed her when they were apart. But even when he was at home, he would write little letters to her. You know, if he got up and had to leave the house before she woke up, he would leave a note that said something like, Good morning, my dear little wife. I hope you slept well. Or, I hope you didn't get up too hurriedly. Or, please don't stress yourself about the household duties because just you take care of yourself so that nothing happens to you before I come home tonight at 6 o'clock. Romantic. Oh, a romantic Wolf. But I think he was not too easy to live with. A man full of boundless energy, who had grown up traveling the world with every detail of his life organized by his father. He really had no chance to grow up or learn how to be practical. That's right, and Constanza did her very best to support him. For instance, if he had a commission that he had to finish in time, she would stay up with him all night just for moral support. And when he traveled, she did her best to come with him. And of course, when she discovered the state of their finances, she really took matters into her own hands. And she took out loans on their furniture so that they could not only pay their debts, but also have a little money to live on. And she uh, found a new place for them to live in that was much more affordable for them. How did Wolfgang react to Constanze becoming the family business manager? He was extremely grateful because he told her, I will work so hard that never again will we have such a financial situation. How many children did Wolfer and Constanze have? They had six altogether, four little boys and two little girls. But unfortunately, only two of them lived to adulthood. And that was the composer Franz Xaver Mozart, who was also known as Wolfgang, and his older brother, Carl Thomas, who was a translator and an official in Milan. I guess Leopold never really warmed up to Constanze, though. Well, that's not entirely true, because actually he made a trip to Vienna to visit them in 1785. And he stayed with them for 10 months and was very impressed by Constanze and her mothers and sisters, because we know this from letters that he wrote home to Nano. And of course, he was also just charmed by his little grandson, because he said that he almost never cried and was such a happy child, always smiling. But unfortunately, at this time, Wolfgang was composing so much and so hard that he, when his father left, he didn't probably correspond with him as much as he should have. And so Leopold got irritated and eventually angry. And so everything positive that had happened during his visit was more or less gone and disappeared. And by the way, Right here we are at Nonbergasse number 12. In this very house, Constanze lived. And how long did she and Sophie live here then? They stayed until 1841 because at that time, Constanze's health was starting to deteriorate and the old foot injury that she had had was really bothering her. And so they moved to Mozart Plots number eight so that she could observe the progress on the new Mozart statue. What happened to her foot? She had injured it actually back in 1789 and the injury was so severe that she was bedridden for months. Wolfel must have worried a great deal about his dear little wife. He did indeed, and Sophie, who had nursed her through the injury, later recounted that Wolfgang would sit there day after day and compose right by her bedside. Just to be certain that she was okay? 
Yes, and to make sure that nobody bothered her because apparently there was a story that one day a servant came in who was not particularly respectful of Constanze's condition and so Wolfgang kind of gently shoved him out and when he did he was holding a penknife and he cut his own leg. Normally Wolfgang would have made a terrible fuss about this, but this time he limped out of the room, got it bandaged up, and took great care to hide the injury from Constanza so that she would not worry about him. When did she finally recover? It took a good 18 months before she was fully recovered, but we know that the injury continued to bother her because when she returned to Baden by Wien, shortly thereafter, Mozart wrote to the local choir master there, a man by the name of Anton Stoll, and he asked if he could please help Constanza with her travel arrangements and organize a room for her on the ground floor so that she wouldn't have to walk up the stairs every day with her tender foot. And he organized it for her? He did indeed, and as a thank you gift, Mozart wrote a nice motet for Stoll's church choir, the Ave Verum Corpus. Wow, that was some gift. Yes, I would say that Mr. Stoll was quite the lucky man. Well, Katie, thanks as always. Peace be it. You are very welcome.